Hey guys, how you doing? So under my last video where I talked about how this woman applied to 200, 300 jobs and didn't get a, and didn't get a job, somebody wrote uh, 300 at this point is rookie numbers. So yeah, welcome to the job market. Let me tell you, for people who've only been in it for three, five years or so, all you've seen in the development world is the upside. No recession, no technology changes. Now, for the first time, many of you are starting to see what happens every so often. I've seen this a few times before. You see this new technology enter the game and changes the game. You have to pivot as a developer and by big, by big, uh, by a lot. You have to pivot quite a bit, in fact. Uh, number two, well, sometimes. Number two, we're entering a slowdown, perhaps recession. Again, I've seen this before. Uh, there was the dot-com boom where I was there in the 90s, and then you had the dot-com bubble crash. Everything changed, but then we had, once we, everything settled, then we had a huge boom again. So in this video, we're gonna look at uh, some of the things you can do today. I'm gonna give you some perspective about this market as a developer, uh, given my uh, three decades of coding experience. All right, let's get into it. So, it looks like PHP uh, just turned 30 years old. 30 years old, can you imagine? So, I remember when PHP was just starting out as a templating language and then the creator of PHP who was a Canadian another Canadian I'm a Canadian and he realized people started using it as a programming language so he started adding in programming to it or capability to it that is part of the reason why PHP became the redheaded stepchild of software development because it started off kind of hectic that way but today in 2025 with the uh, since PHP 8 PHP 8 is really an enterprise level language. It is right up there and competitive with the Javas and the C Sharps of the world and the JavaScript. It's uh, type safe. It's extremely performant. It's certainly at runtime faster than Python and Ruby. I'm not sure about JavaScript though. And it has all these enterprise ready features and it has these syntactic shortcuts, if you will, to make software development easy. So yeah, PHP 8, uh, 8.4 we're at now, 30 years old, JavaScript's 30 years old approximately, well 95, 1995 is the birth date of JavaScript and uh, Java, C Sharp, I think it's 1999, 2000. Anyway, all very mature technologies. That's the thing about development, it has reached, several years ago it reached plateau, it's very mature. Uh, the advantage of PHP in 2025 is that it is the back door, if you will, for junior developers who may be having a hard time getting a job. So why do I say that? Why is PHP the back door for junior devs? Well, in terms of the AI implementation, um, that, well, it's, you're seeing AI starting to permeate all aspects of development, but it's really taking a bigger a role in larger, medium to larger organizations. No question about it. They have the infrastructure and the wherewithal to be able to start aggressively implementing AI in what they do. Whereas in the PHP world, you do have the enterprise, but you also have a lot of small businesses who use it, you know, whether for their custom e-commerce shops, uh, Laravel implementations. Laravel, if you don't know, is PHP's most prominent framework. It's a fantastic web framework. It's full stack framework. We use it ourselves for my uh, learning SaaS studio web. Use it for years. And don't forget, I'm a Java guy originally. So uh, the reason I moved to PHP decades ago, a couple, well, not a decade and a half ago, is because it was stable, fast, easy to program with, and uh, easy to get hosting at the time. Um, it was. Uh, it had a lot of uh, business advantages. Uh, the deficits that people perceive in PHP, largely these are people who actually don't use PHP who believe this. They still think that PHP 3.0 is still being used when we're at PHP 8.4. Since PHP 5.6, especially 7, PHP is wildly different from what it was. It has all its advantages, its original advantages of easy to deploy, easy to learn, but also has now the enterprise-ready capabilities. 
So in 2025, one of the added benefits of PHP is that if you are a junior developer, it's what you want to get into simply because it's that backdoor because you can get jobs, whether you freelance or, or just a normal job, doing PHP-based work, whether it be updating WordPress sites, Drupal sites, etc. Is it the most exciting? No, but if you're getting paid and you can get paid good money if you know what you're doing, that makes it exciting, right? And the big hurdle that junior devs have now is getting getting into the job now because a lot of the junior positions are being replaced by AI. You see in all the statistics are coming out. It took a few years to happen, it's been it's happening. But in speaking with people who are in AI, people who use it, um, I might be investing or becoming a co-founder of AI business, uh, it's still not able to replace senior devs. And I don't think we'll be able to do that for a while. But at junior devs, to get that junior level, to get that job as a developer, you have to develop experience. So again, what I always tell people, learn the web stack so you can build responsive websites. Then I will learn PHP. Then I start freelancing. What you're going to find in the freelancing world is dominated by small business e-commerce implementations. There's a lot of PHP there. You do that, you're going to learn to debug. You learn to work with databases. You're going to learn to deal with clients, how to speak with people. Uh, then that's going to be your backdoor into uh, a junior position. On top of that, of course, on top of PHP, which uh, I think is probably the best language today, if you want to get in there as a junior, uh, learn, of course, AI, understand AI. If you can become an AI connaissant, an AI, somebody who knows AI and understands the landscape, the different models, when to use different models here and there, whether it be Claude, uh, Grok, uh, GPT, um, Gemini, etc. cetera. Um, understand them, understand how to implement them, so, for example, in my mentoring group, I have somebody who's actually using GPT for his own little web app, which is PHP-based. So he has a, a teaching SaaS. He's a tutor, a math tutor. And he implemented uh, AI within his math teaching app to give better responses for the students. And he's actually got it. Last time I spoke to him, he got his first paying client. So... There's a lot of opportunity there where uh, as a freelancer, as a small SaaS developer, um, you even though we're in the age of AI, um, you could actually, you know what, as far as building a SaaS business, AI opens up a huge amount of possibilities that you wouldn't have otherwise. I spoke about this earlier. I spoke to a startup out of Southeast Asia, and uh, they said to me that they were able to build their mobile app in the two, three months, I forget now, I think it was two or three months, and he said, without AI, it would have taken over a year to do. So what does that mean? That means that small development companies, one or two or three people companies, will be able to produce uh, applications, SaaS applications, that otherwise would have taken uh, investment to get done. So there's huge opportunities for startups, huge opportunities for uh, new companies to jump in, leverage the AI to get that uh, that scaling, uh, if you will, in terms of productivity. So yes, AI is changing things, uh, but um, if you're nimble about it, as people in 1990s were nimble about moving from thick client to uh, web development, there's a lot of opportunities. So again, the the language to leverage today as a noob developer to get your foot in the door, I think it's PHP because of the reasons I just give. Um, and the great thing is once you learn PHP, which is a modern language, you'll be able to pivot those skills into JavaScript, into Python, into Java, wherever you, just, wherever you land afterwards. But learn that PHP, start doing some small gigs. That's gonna open, that's gonna give you that much needed experience. And you throw in some AI skills, agentic skills, and that's where you're gonna get your uh, foot in through the back door into a software development job, if you want, or, I think uh, I would encourage you, that may open up possibilities for you to start developing uh, SaaS software. Again, think of the AI as a huge opportunity because now you alone, with with good working knowledge of AI, will be able to put out applications in a fraction of the time. You'll be able to put out applications as a solo dev that may have taken a team of five or six to do. You could do it alone. 
And then, uh, again, with the help of AI, you can start getting it out there and so on. So there's a lot of opportunity. Um, yeah, point of this video, PHP, my friends, I know it sounds weird. Because of the way PHP is used in the marketplace, uh, interestingly enough, it's the most protected from the AI uh, scourge, if you will, or the AI purge of developers, well, entry-level developers, rather, from the game. So that's, that's, the, that's the, uh, the, the ticket. If you are a junior, get into PHP, uh, get into the web. Uh, also learn the AI space, agentic AI, start doing freelance gigs, little freelance projects. And I really encourage you to work on your own SaaS products. If you do that, uh, that's where the big advantage is. So for example, going back to the math guy, let's say he puts together, uh, I think he was charging 40 pounds a month to access his app, right? So you get 100 people, it's 4,000 pounds a month, passive income. Uh, accessing your app uh, that he built on his own and he was fresh he just he didn't know anything about development he came into my program and away you go so yeah so imagine you know you get a hundred people it's four thousand pounds you get two thousand people using your SaaS not much uh, that's eight thousand pounds a month of passive income and again part of the reason he was able to do it because A is doing PHP he's doing web stack uh, and he's actually implementing ChatGPT within the context of his app to add it, give it extra features. And he's able to do this on his own. He learned how to code from me through my program, but he then used uh, ChatGPT to uh, to fill in any blanks that needed to be filled in. You know, any one course can't teach you everything. That would be a stupid course, by the way. You don't want to make the mistake of the PERMA students that are out there keep on, I gotta learn this, I gotta learn that, I gotta learn this, I gotta learn that. No, no, you gotta learn your fundamentals and then you get into the game. You can't uh, be constantly just doing tutorials and and code competitions, other waste of times like that. So there you go, if you've been having a hard time getting jobs, remember PHP, the 30-year-old PHP, it's probably uh, a nice route for you, a nice back door to get into uh, the software development game uh, in terms of getting a job, do freelance gigs, and uh, again, I highly encourage you to look at SaaS development. I hope that's useful. Cheers.